Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Marriage Monday. We're so excited to have you here tonight. And uh, yet again, we're going to be going through the Enneagram. And tonight we have our special guest back, Sam Byers. Yes. This is when I need the soundboard. <sighs> there we go. Well, Sam, I noticed that you're missing somebody. Uh, I know. My best part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's out. Um, I am waiting the results of a test Aww. because of this wonderful season that we're in. And depending on whether or not the results come back positive or negative, that defend like literally defies the whole next two weeks of my life. So we're praying and hoping and believing God that it's a negative, but because of my job and the things that I come in contact with, this is not rare, unfortunately for me. <laughs> Well, we're going to be praying for you. I know everybody in the YouTube universe is going to be praying for you. So anyway, yeah. we're going to jump in tonight for, uh, we left off last week going all the way through six and tonight is seven, eight, nine, seven, eight, nine types. And so we're already, before we hit the record button, we're already kind of touching on some pretty hot, uh, topic. So <laughs> Sam, you want to take us into seven with the enthusiast? Absolutely. Absolutely. These are type sevens. Type sevens are the entertaining optimists. These are people they are extremely fun to be around. They're going to be like the life of the party. Um, and that's because like their core fears are being deprived, trapped in emotional pain, limited or bored, um, missing out on something fun. These guys have extreme FOMO. So you want to, <laughs> they're going to be entertaining all around. And uh, their core desire is to be happy. They want to be fully satisfied and they want to be content. Um, the weakness of this is feeling a great emptiness inside and having like an insatiable like desire to fill themselves up mm -hmm. with experiences, stimulation, or hopes of feeling completely satisfied and content. So it's, it's going to be like gluttony essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they're just trying to find like something that's going to fill them up. They don't want to ever be bored, stagnant. Like they always want to be just high energy and good vibes. Um, their, their core longing, like the one thing that they want to hear most in this world is that like, you're going to be taken care of. So security is a huge thing for sevens. Um, and you'll actually see that in kind of like a theme across the next few types about security and like peace um healthy sevens they they know that the joy and the satisfaction that they long for can't come from anything exciting or the experiences uh to stimulate them they try to place their hope into but like instead of it coming from experiences and the stuff that they're looking for it comes from the presence of god and just being in the presence of the love of the heavenly father who fills them up and gives them true radiant joy. Um, they see that like being God's child means that they have everything that they need and desire to bring them the lasting satisfaction and happiness that their heart is actually craving. And so as you, as you move into the average levels, they start to forget that God's love and joy is coming from him and so they begin to move into these average uh levels of development and they can't tolerate pain sadness or disappointment and they can no longer like experience the deep satisfaction in god so they think that they have to create new and exciting experiences to avoid any form of discomfort and that's just their average like depletion right so then we're moving into even unhealthier levels where their whole focus at this point is uh just to escape anything that they can that causes them pain or boredom they can no longer tolerate being restricted or having limits placed on them and so they find ways to escape and find pleasure and they take more risks and reckless they're more reckless um and more prone to addictions and so you can just see like the constant decline and it all kind of stems from this need of uh, need to feel joy, need to feel happiness in their lives. And when, when they are in their healthiest levels and they're looking to God, they, they understand that that's where their hope comes from. That's where their joy is. Yeah. And when that starts to kind of have the perspective shifted towards 
they have to provide their own joy and happiness that's when you start to see like the just the complete spiral yeah of uh self-gratification really well so inside of a marriage for seven would you say that their problem areas would probably be like doing going through conflict um Mm -hmm. living kind of like in a false reality um, yes not wanting to admit the truth of what like if there is problems like that would be something that that would be hard for them they're gonna if it's gonna be extremely hard for them they are going to want to just fill their time with busy work and like uh parties and going out with friends rather than having the hard conversations and actually talk to their spouse um and they they won't want to stick to a routine because a routine can become very bored like and so sevens are all about not being bored um so that can be a huge point of conflict in just their trying to avoid pain there yeah now talk to me i know it's going to be getting off into a different subject i know we're on time crunch tonight but like it seems like a lot of these um i'll just jump right into it so like trying to distract yourself trying to look at anything else Mm -hmm. to take away the pain except for looking to god it seems like i mean i am guilty of that just being vulnerable with everybody i think that a lot of people sometimes when they don't want to run to god they'll run to other things you mentioned the addiction which yeah. is a huge one because I'm like, okay, well, if I can't find fulfillment in God, which is where I'm supposed to find ultimate yeah. fulfillment is in Christ, um, then that takes away, sorry, my alarm was going off, but then <laughs> that uh, opens up the door for any type of stuff. That could be an affair, that could be actual yep. drugs and alcohol, anything to kind of fill that void rather than Christ. So yep. would you say that a lot of the types have this or would it be because I'm a six and I'm close Maybe to a seven? seven? I would so, say... I would say um, a lot of types have it, but I would look at it from the perspective of sevens are more prone to it. They're more vulnerable to it. Okay. So like the enemy is going to come and he's going to attack them in this kind of a situation because he knows that he can push this button and he knows that if he can make them feel just a little bit of pain that they're going to run from that. He knows that if he can make them shift their perspective to, Oh, you have to handle this. Like this is on you to find happiness. Then he can twist that and open up whatever door and whatever path he wants for them. You know, And so I, yeah, I wouldn't say that it's not like, Oh, like threes, twos and ones don't have to worry about this. It's just, no, that's, that's an attack of the enemy. He's going to try to, make you believe that you have to figure that out that's that's one of his biggest lies is this is on you to figure out it's just that sevens are going to be a little bit more prone to this i was gonna say what do you feel like like encouraging all of our sevens out there that are watching this and listening yeah it seems like the sevens are more looking at kind of the other types are more of like the optimists. So yeah, they Mm -hmm. have their faults as well, but then it's like, they're probably the ones that are probably better with change, which I for sure. They're probably the ones that are like, Hey, you know, we're going through this really hard time, but you know what? The grace of God is so awesome. Let's be thankful. You know, they're going to be the silver lining people. They're going to pull the positivity out of the darkest moments. They're going to find the fun in the hardest like seasons. And so they have a very like powerful gift of bringing energy and like joy to others because that's what they want to fill. So they're filled up with that. That's good. That's good. And so then the things that they want to keep be aware of is just not um, running all the time from yes or their emotions or negative emotions or Or yeah yourself with hey everything is honky dory and they're like well maybe you need to take a step back and realize hey we got to get through this Mm -hmm. you know if you're married to a seven then be like hey there's some really real facts we got to look at and kind of move on from there that's really good diving into it and understanding that margin's not a bad thing and that pausing in life is not it's not going to be the end of the world yeah and so we can move on into eights. Number eight. Good old eights. Everyone loves an eight. Everybody loves an eight. <laughs> um, eights are the protective challengers. These guys are the, uh, I've heard them be described as sandpaper against your skin kind of personalities. Um, and it's actually pretty funny. I was listening to a, to a podcast about them not too long ago. 
And I really liked the way that they approached it. And it's kind of interesting because eights kind of have like this uh, run through the mud kind of like, like reputation. And so there's a lot, unfortunately, like there's a lot of negativity that revolves around type eights um, just because of how they are. But ultimately when you, and when we get into the, the healthy levels and just like their, their positive moments you can see the true beauty of an eight but they're going to be the people that are going to just grind at you the most (laughs) in life um but that's just because their core fear and everything that they kind of are centered around is like they don't want to be weak so being weak and powerless harmed controlled vulnerable manipulated and just left at the mercy of injustice is like a huge turnoff, huge core fear of the type eights and their desire is to protect themselves and those in their inner circle at all costs. Um, Eights are probably the most loyal people I've ever seen. Like there is true loyalty in eights. Whenever they find their circle, they find their people. It's like, they're going to be taken and, and uh, like, like, Uh, I'll get into this a little bit more when we talk about the healthy levels, but they're kind of pioneering pathways for like the people that they see in their inner circle. Yeah. Um, Their core weakness is going to be uh, lust or excess. They're constantly desiring intensity and control of power, pushing themselves willingly on or willfully on life and people in order to get what they desire. Um, they're longing the message they want to hear more than anything in the world is you will not be betrayed. Wow. And so, like I said, like the, the sense of security and that core of like longing is very thick in uh, type eights. Wow. And so as we get into their healthy levels, like I was saying earlier, like eights are very similar to like a snowplow. Um, healthy eights are going to use their intensity and power to plow a path for those who cannot plow a path for themselves. Eights have no problem uh, being the ones that take hits um, so that others can move forward in life. And they are especially good at plowing a path for those who are at the mercy of injustice. And so when you start to get into the average level of eights, um, they forget that like God will provide and protect them. So they start to think that it's up to them to protect themselves from being harmed, controlled, or taken advantage of by others. And so they start to use their intensity, strength, and confrontational style style to like ward off uh, those who are trying to harm them. And they will challenge and go against any other like person to test them and to see if they like the other person is being truthful or if they're trying to take advantage of them, which would move innate into their very unhealthy levels, which at their, their lowest, their whole focus uh, at this level resolves around or revolves around um, protecting themselves from others whom they believe are going to be a threat to them. They don't trust people. They assume everyone has an agenda to hurt them or control them. Therefore, they want to be like, they want to beat them to it by controlling and hurting others first, right? If they have been hurt by someone, they can be very vengeful and making sure that others get what they deserve. Yeah. So, eights they have like these rough edges <laughs> yeah. but i and i've i've kind of thought on this with my own life and my own personal like experiences and i start to find that i actually have a lot of eights in my life and i think because as a nine like and you'll see whenever we get into nines like what what drives me to this i feel like eights can push me to like a, a better level of myself yeah And so I'm constantly like drawn to that. And so I have a lot of friends who are just eights and I constantly call them up on the phone and like, Hey man, here's the situation. Like, here's what I'm going through. Can I get your perspective on this? Because they're going to tell me like the hard truths and they're going to like give it to me straight. Um, And that's one of the positive things about eights though. Like they are just like these driving forces for their people. If you're their person, like they are going to pioneer you like nothing else and just 
they're not going to tell you it's going to be an easy road. Like they're going to tell you it's hard. They're going to tell you like your flaws. Um, and you, hearing that can, can be hurtful sometimes, but ultimately eights have a true soft, like, and they hate, they hate me saying this, but they have a true soft side to themselves. And like, they are so full of heart. Um, that they just they don't want to accept that though they see it as weakness and they don't want to like acknowledge that they have these uh desires to be loved and 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 these emotions of of hurt and weakness and fear yeah they don't like to be vulnerable no not at all but once you're in you're in and you and they'll be vulnerable with the people that are in their inner circle so yes absolutely one thing we've said <clears throat> over all the types and then even just some of the other assessments or anything that we're looking at to do with personality, that there's no uh, bad personality, but yeah. there's only bad character. We've said this yeah. in the other trainings and stuff that we did that yeah. God doesn't make bad personality types. And so these are shaped by our environment. They're shaped by people. They're shaped by our faith. <clears throat> Excuse me. So all these things feed into our types. Uh, but, like I said, the, the only thing that people would be saying they're the sandpaper or something like that, this mm-hmm. is actually a good thing. This is the people that gets the ball rolling to see, yeah. this, like you just said, for you, this is people that you can call up and say, hey, I need a decision. I need somebody who's decisive. I need somebody who's yeah. going to waver in it, but is like, hey, this is the way you need to go. Uh, because if we didn't have that, we wouldn't have really, you know, anything inside the church really rolling anything inside of our nation. We need those decisive people. Yeah. Well, and think about like, what does sandpaper do? It refines, right? Yeah. So like it gets in there, it takes off the, the worn down spots. Like it's almost like a chisel as well, like to take out the imperfections and to smooth it out and just get it ready to be polished. And it's, it's a painful process, but ultimately like it's to make whatever, it's working on better and to bring it higher value. That's good. That's good. All right. Anything else on eight? Nope. All right. So number moving nine. on number nine. Moving on to the yeah. nines. Oh, nine is so special. Oh, nines. <laughs> nines are the peaceful mediators. Um, they absolutely despise conflict. That is their core fear. They do not want to be in conflict, tension, discord, feeling shut out, overlooked, losing connection from others. Like that's no thank you. <laughs> their core desire, guys, is uh, is having inner stability and just peace of mind. I always, um, I tell Kaylee this, like as as my mind, when I think about, peace and everything like that like i have this image of like this pond and it's just like this flat surface water and that's my peace and so when i'm in conflict and there's issues with either friends family or loved ones and it's just like to to me it's there's there's pebbles being dropped into my like my pond and it's causing ripples it's causing waves like everything is not still yeah and so nines um they want the peace in and when we get into the levels of health like you'll start to see that it's kind of a peace at all cost and the way that nines can perceive that is i can i can obtain peace by removing myself oh, wow. and so um their their core weakness is sloth uh, remaining in like an unrealistic, idealistic world in order to keep the peace. They're remaining easygoing and not like being disturbed by their anger, falling asleep to their passions, abilities, desires, needs, and worth by merging with others. And um, that's a big thing for like nines. If you do any, any study on the Enneagram, you'll find for nines, they have this thing that's uh they they tend to merge with people yeah um and a lot of people can look at that and kind of have a different perspective but ultimately from the nines perspective it's a i don't want conflict with you and so i'm going to remove my desires and my wants Mm -hmm. and it's what you want so what's and so say that again 
I said, what's the danger in that? The danger in that is that you essentially become a shell of yourself and you, you are no longer present in your own relationship. You have taken on a false sense of peace. Yeah. And so you're hurting, you're choosing hurt and you're choosing pain for yourself versus actually dealing with conflict. And that doesn't resolve the conflict. It just makes you believe that you've resolved the conflict. Wow. wow. But you're still, you're, you're putting yourself on a cross. Um, their core longing, the, the thing that nines want to hear the most is your presence matters. Yeah. And so nines, because they, tend to back shelf themselves um having someone state that they actually matter and like their their decisions their desires truly do matter and it's kind of like the people that are like no no like seriously like what do you want that's gonna like nines are gonna look at that and be like wow you you actually value me um so healthy nines they are fully awake to themselves they know that their voice, their presence matter to God, others, and the world. They honor themselves by taking the time to know what they want and then speaking up for themselves and knowing that God has like uniquely blessed them with talents and gifts. They invest in developing themselves. We're huge on self-development and just trying to better ourselves. Um, nines on their average uh, level, which very much as like their autopilot. <laughs> um, they begin to forget that they are Christ's like beloved child, yeah. fully seen as important and valuable. And so they begin to move into these average levels of just development where because nines have begun to forget how valuable they are, they believe that their presence doesn't matter and they'll start yeah. back shelving themselves. And so that can like just spiral down into their unhealthy levels where their whole focus at this level revolves around keeping others happy so they can have what seems to them to be a peace of mind and inner stability. Unfortunately, the more a nine accommodates others and forgoes their own desires, opinions, and just passions, the more unstable life becomes. So it's like, kind of a catch 22 with nines yeah. and they always have like a like they it's funny to me because nines love sleep <laughs> yeah. and so um what's sad and like oddly poetic in a negative way for nines is they can sometimes fall asleep to themselves and they they don't they don't wake up to their own desire a uh, huge book that helped me was journey of desire by um john eldridge mm-hmm. and it just completely reopened my world because my entire my life my perspective was desire was selfishness wow and so i threw out all of my desires because i was in fear of being looked at and perceived as selfish and so that's a hard one for i mean you have two sides of the coin here so let's say somebody is married to a nine you have the mm-hmm. nine who's trying to keep the peace like you said the mm-hmm. pond or whatever it is the the yeah. picture that they have in their head that they just want to stay calm yeah um, you have them trying to keep the peace inside the home trying like you said not to be selfish or whatever the feeling is inside of them And then you have the spouse who may not know about the Enneagram or know about their their type and know that they're a nine. So they're just like, oh, they're, we have the same personality and we have the same desire Mm -hmm. and all this other Mm -hmm. stuff. In in the meantime, if you're a nine out there, you may be dying in a pile and you're just like, I don't know why I feel this way. I'm just trying to keep, you know, peace in my house. And maybe that's, that's honorable where you're feeling like, you know, I just want to keep everything fine. The family fine, kids fine, but I'm just like dying. So what would you say to those people that are just like, I don't know how to come out and tell people, Hey, I'm not trying to be selfish, but I'm not having my needs met. What would you say? For the spouses of nines who are going through that, um, I would recommend very similar to the fours creating that safe space. Okay. And so designating a time throughout the week my fours real quick so remind us the four is the individualist right yes 
Okay. And so like the emotions and everything like that and dealing with a four, having the safe space to be like, Hey, um, how can I better love you? Okay. And like also fives kind of go into this as well because of their observing and yeah. how, how shut off they can be from others just because they just don't feel like they are uh, capable of bringing other people into their world. Um, having a space where you can sit down with them and say like, Hey, this is a safe space. This is designated time that you can, can voice these things. Yeah. And it's understood going into this time. Like you're not being selfish um, for the nines. You're not being selfish. Like this is, this is where I truly want to hear you. And ultimately like nines are going to value that because it is going to bring actual peace. The problem with a nine that is doing what you're talking about, where they have just completely full blown merged into their spouse. Um, they, they are feeling re resentment. They're feeling um, it's like they're just a shell of themselves that there's just this emptiness. Right. And so they don't understand why, but because they value peace so much, but ultimately if you give them the space to voice that they, they can do some soul searching, which nines love to do. So you're already like hitting their niche. Right. right. <laughs> and so they love to develop themselves. And this is, this is an opportunity where it's, it's not perceived as selfishness. It's not perceived as like, you trying to get your way in any any form but you're truly being loved yeah that's so good so on all like we've just gone through one through nine on these and every yeah. single one of them um i'm hearing that like you we each need to learn how to communicate and yeah. like yes. learning about yourself and learning yeah. through the enneagram learning about your spouse yeah. so that you can communicate in a positive way and make headway is so important. Yes. I mean, we can communicate and completely run over our spouse um, <laughs> when we don't know what, how, what their feeling is, what Enneagram they are, how they perceive things. Um, yeah. Like and you just, just said, the eight, I mean, mm -hmm. you could totally try to communicate and run over them when, mm -hmm. when they're trying to get over to you. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just so key. And this is why one of the things why we love the Enneagram, because you learn about each other, you yeah. learn, what yeah. each other's about and how to communicate with each other and um yeah so one of the tools yeah. you used say it again in case people missed it missed it in prior episodes it was the story i'm telling myself yeah tell us about that yeah so that is that's a tool that i use um when i'm trying to communicate in any kind of conflict or any type of high tense situation because i'm a nine and i'm all about peace yeah. Um, I want to approach that, that entire argument or that entire situation without throwing blame on my spouse or anyone that I'm involved with the conflict with. And so you can preface everything that you're about to say with, okay, guys, like the story I'm telling myself is, and then you go into what you are perceiving the situation to be. And so um, if I really wanted to go to this thing and Kaylee was like, oh yeah, like that'll be great. And then the day comes and then she's like, no, we're not doing that. I can get really hurt and I can come to her and just be like, so um, the story I'm telling myself right now is that you, you aren't loving me when you decide that the things that I want to do don't matter. And like, that's, I understand that that's not necessarily like what you try to do, but that's what I'm hearing in my head. Yeah. And so you can voice these, these lies that are essentially being shouted in your head, which is what they are. And you voice it in a, in a way that's like, I'm not saying like, cause if I just went up to her and I was like, Hey, you don't love me. Yeah. It's like, what, what are you talking about? And then we're even a, in the more fight that isn't even dealing with the situation that we're fighting about. Yeah. It's like, I have attacked her with my words because I felt hurt. Right. And so when you preface it with the story I'm telling myself, it kind of debunks that. And it just says, Hey, let me let, let me let you into my head a little bit more. Yeah. And this is what I'm hearing. Yeah. And 
in that space, it's going to be this opportunity for them to be like, no, that's not one. That's not my heart at all. Yeah. Two, I'm so sorry that I like caused that or three, like, can we figure out where this is coming from? Yeah. And then you can actually work together on it. So the story I'm telling myself who uh, said that, I, I can't remember. Uh, Bre- uh, Brene Brown. Brene Brown. And then yeah. another tool we've mentioned on Marriage Monday before, it was Danny Silk. It was, I feel blank. When you blank, I need to feel blank. I feel yeah. unsafe when you drive a hundred miles an hour, <laughs> I need to feel safe. And so it's taking yeah. the blame off of the person and saying, I'm not the judge and jury. I'm not trying to decide your fate. I'm just telling you how I feel. Mm-hmm. How can you make me feel safe again? And mm-hmm. it's placing it on you. And if anybody is mature enough inside the relationship, they should see that as an opportunity to meet your spouse's need or this whole Enneagram thing. This is any relationship. So yeah. am I mature enough to meet Sam's need when he's telling me his story, when he's telling me this is the way that I feel. So yeah. Uh, Sam, last comments, and then we'll go to the growth moment. So anything else you want to say on one through nine before we go to growth? Um, Like we've said over and over and over again, like the Enneagram is just such an amazing tool that can be used. And I, you want to go into this with that perspective because a lot of people can just look at it and be like, oh, this is, I'm, I'm a type nine and like that, this is who I am. It's not necessarily that. Yeah. at all it's it's um yes you have these core beliefs and you have these core fears and these core desires but the enneagram is so connected like ruth said like there's so much of just underlying themes throughout the entire enneagram and it's kind of more about connected to each other versus like this is who i am this is my type and it's it's more of like you're able to grow so and good. here's it's it's a it's a map yeah really like it's a stepping map that you can look at and be like wow here's where i'm at today yeah that's where i want to be yeah and so and then everyone's always just striving to be nine so <laughs> nine's a, <laughs> just a little bit of everybody already right. so. yeah yeah no i think it's so good this whole thing everything that we're all about here on the show is just providing people tools giving you opportunities yeah. to uh increase you know your love in your marriage to make sure that you can make it through marriage um but really this is for any kind of uh relationship and so just take it to heart use all of these tools um this is why we're giving them to you to make the best of your marriage um so for the growth moment sam there were two books that you yeah. books there are two books you gotta mention <laughs> yeah. So, um, so the last few weeks, you guys have just kind of dabbled in the Enneagram. And so now you have, you have kind of been handed the map and it's up to you to dive in deeper and to like really dig into this thing. And two books that really helped me is there's a book called the sacred Enneagram and that's by uh, Christopher Huritz, which is a weird last name, but Hey, in the right accent. So that was perfect. Yeah, it's yeah. perfect. Um, and this is going to be just like finding the unique path to spiritual growth in the Enneagram. Okay. And it's an amazing book. Um, the other one that I highly recommend is do what? She was yawning on our oh show. Oh my gosh. Am I boring you? <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. Anyway, this is a classic. <laughs> the, wow. other, the other book that I highly recommend is called The Road Back to You. And it's the Enneagram journey to self-discovery. This is written by Ian Morgan Cron, and it is such a great book and just kind of diving into more of like your type and, and how you process things and like kind of what's brought you to this. And so um, the road back to you is such a great book, especially for nines. I highly encourage nines to read that one. Um, It's going to be more, of just like being okay with your desires, being okay with who you are. Um, and then just for a bonus add on, like I said, the, the uh, journey, wait, what was it? The journey of desire yeah. is by John Eldridge. That one, that's a freebie for you guys. That one's just incredible, especially for nines. 
I was trying to look up while you were talking on here about these two books. Uh, yeah. There was an album that came out and I'm sorry, guys, I'm, I'm looking this up as we're talking, but uh, the artist was sleeping at last. Yes. And they take you or this, this album, the, the artist is taking you to types one mm-hmm. through nine and actually has a song. It's almost yep. Sam. I'm going to go as far as to say it's prophetic. Yes. They're singing over you and it's actually encouraging. Um, yep. One of the people, Rachel, my sister, uh, Rachel Hennessy, shout out. We love you. But <laughs> she was the one who introduced me to this. She said she just got wrecked by one of her songs because she was listening to it. She's like, oh my God, this is so, I'm not making fun of you, Rachel, but she's like, this is so good because it was like really prophesying over what she perceived as a negative thing the the artist sleeping at last was actually saying no this is one of your best strengths and so um sam i didn't know if you heard of that so you're agreeing you know, with sleeping you. at last uh they uh, it even a step further for you like more than just listening to your song he actually has a podcast and he does a deep dive into every type and then plays you the song on the podcast and so definitely look it up. Uh, Sleeping at Last podcast is what it's called. Um, and then through that, he has I just kind of scroll through and you'll see like one, two, three, four or five, all the way through nine. Yeah. Um, and what he does is the guy who wrote the sacred Enneagram, uh, Chris, Christopher, uh-huh. he has him come on and tell a little bit more about the types and they talk about it like back and forth a little bit. And then he plays the song and it's very interesting because he's a nine and nines are uh, they're They're very good at perspective. Yeah. So they're kind of built up of everything from one to eight in a nine. Wow. And so we, it's, it's kind of a, like no one else could have done this project except for him being a nine. Okay. And then, no. okay. I'm just saying though, like no, literally no, to truly look at it that way. I'm just but saying, it's interesting. Oh my God here. <laughs> well, Jesus was a nine. Okay. For sure. He was all about Thank peace. you for joining us on marriage. <laughs> anyway. No. And so, yeah, definitely look up the podcast um, because it is very, very prophetic and he loves Jesus. And it's just like, it bleeds through his music. Yeah. I can't recommend sleeping at last, like more. (laughs) Well, I'm glad we got that on the last part of it because we have the books, we have uh, albums for you to listen to. We have a podcast channel for you to listen to. And so uh, check these out. It's a wonderful source of information. Um, Sam, we love you. We're going to have you on the show again, if you will. You and so uh, to honor everybody that's watching and listening, would you pray us out for this week? Absolutely. Dear God, I thank you so much for this time and just this, this amazing tool that you have just given us, Lord God, as human beings to kind of walk through and navigate this thing called life. And Lord, I'm, I'm just so glad and i i find it so fitting that we would be on this topic and going through this just as we get close to a season that is all about thankfulness and just i want to say thank you lord for this time and this opportunity and this tool that you have given us and how it better connects your people lord god and shows us how to better love each other and how to better navigate through relationships and emotions together and to really talk about just like the the core fears lord god and like our true hardships that we go through as people i thank you once again for this tool that we are able to use and so i pray over everyone as they are continuing this journey that this isn't just the end of the the series that we're in, but it's actually a beginning for them, Lord God, of just self-discovery and and finding better ways to move forward in life and to truly understand themselves. And so I thank you for that. And I, I ask that you just pour out favor on everyone as they go through this journey. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, Sam, we love you. I love you guys. Uh, there on the YouTube universe, Facebook universe, we love you too. <laughs> Y'all have an awesome week. Go kiss your spouse. <laughs> Whatever. Bye. Right? You want to kiss me? That's fine. <laughs> Pause.